lay out the foundation to begin with, and I'm just going to keep referring back to it. So if at any point uh, you, know, you forget something I said, please just uh, ask. Uh, I'm happy to repeat myself. Uh, so the way we do jiu-jitsu at our academy is it's not a collection of moves. It's a set of basic principles and concepts that govern human movement. We use the term alignment. You guys have probably all heard the words base, posture, and structure. Uh, we're going to give very specific de definitions for those three things. Base is a platform from which to apply and absorb force, specifically maximal force. So if I can only generate a partial amount of force that my body is capable of, then I don't have good base. And can I have four uh, I'm going to give a simple example. Most of you are familiar with combat base, right? What I'm doing right now. So notice how, yeah, he's already been through this. So right now, he's got a lot of toes, which means right now, if I want, if you want to have like a pushing contest, I'm a fair bit bigger than him, I shouldn't win that pushing contest. But because I don't have access to uh, like the muscular force generated by my lower half because my toes are dead, if I go to push him, he can resist fairly well. And if he goes to push me, yeah, I'm going to get knocked over. So our base is our effective contact with the ground. Any surface really, usually it's going to be the ground, occasionally a wall. Sometimes you'll derive base from pushing off your partner. But if you don't have the sort of contact with whatever platform you're using to generate maximum force, then your base is somewhat compromised. And particularly since we, you know, one of the reasons that I probably most of us like jiu-jitsu is allow smaller, weaker people to beat bigger people. And the only way we can do that is by summoning the maximum amount of force that we're capable of. So that's what our base allows us to do. Our base is also relative to our opponent, and it's relative to our goals. So if I have great base in this direction, but he's over here, that doesn't help me very much. Right? And then the next thing we want to do is recognize what posture is. Most people know what posture means like keep your spine straight, right? Like don't bend your head, don't twist your neck, because that's kind of like an off switch for the body. It compromises the integrity of my spinal column. What a lot of people kind of neglect is if I twist my spine, so for example, if I'm going like this, my posture is also broken. I can appear to have good posture. So again, I can for a second here. So if I'm blocking the cross face, and just kind of, I really drive into me here, I can seem like I'm doing the movement correctly, but because my alignment is slightly broken, I'm not effective. So I'm going to correct my posture. I'm going to point my hips and my shoulders in the same direction. And he can come in, and he can come up off of his knees, he can drive all the way. I can hold him here all day. So just by correcting my spinal alignment and fixing my base, because again, if we talk about base being relative to our point and relative to our goals. If I'm twisted like this, my spine is twisted, so my posture is compromised. My base, I'm able to generate force in this direction and absorb force in this direction. But Andrew's generating force at a 45 degree angle, so my base is actually compromised relative to him. Once I do this, my base is actually properly aligned to receive the force that he's generating. He's going in at a 45 degree angle, my base is set up at a 45 degree angle, so I can oppose the force that he generates. Everybody's following me so far? Okay. Structure is the final element. Structure is the efficient positioning of your limbs to achieve a goal. I usually give the example of a push-up. If my goal is to hold a push-up position, this is good structure. And that doesn't mean I can't achieve the goal when my structure is compromised. I can still hold a push-up position like this but I'm getting tired. I'm using muscular force to hold myself up. So eventually, my muscles will fatigue and I'll fail. I can hold this for significantly longer. So it's, again, the efficient use of our limbs, the most efficient use of our limbs, positioning of our limbs to achieve a goal. So structure might mean locking my arm out if I'm trying to keep him at a distance. It might mean keeping my arms as close to my body like this if I'm trying to not be arm bar. Right? Structure changes the most. Base is pretty simple. It's pretty much like put your foot on the ground. Posture is pretty simple. It's keep your spine straight, don't twist yourself up. Structure changes a lot based on circumstances. So it takes the greatest amount of math time to recognize when your structure is broken. Right? And we'll be getting into details of structure uh, quite a bit today. So base, posture, and structure together create our alignment. When I have good alignment, I'm as effective as I can be. As a human being, whatever my potential for generating force is, I'm able to achieve that. If my alignment is compromised in any way, any move that I do, is therefore compromised. I can almost guarantee you every single person in this room has gone for a submission or a guard pass or whatever on somebody and had it fail and not know why. The answer is almost 100% of the time, broken alignment. You went for a move without having your alignment be proper or you went for a move against an opponent who had proper alignment and you didn't break it. So the flip side of alignment, it's not just my body being able to generate force, it's I've got an opponent, and my opponent, if they have good alignment, then they are 
at their full potential for generating force. And if I don't break that alignment first, then moves don't tend to work. Moves work great on beginners. If you're a white belt, I can probably do all kinds of stuff on you because you willingly, not necessarily willingly, but like ignorantly, let's say, break your own alignment all the time. Right? Like white belts are like, yeah, go forward, get triangle, get guillotine, all that kind of stuff. Once you get a little more experience, whether you use the term alignment or not, you probably develop good alignment anyway. Nobody who's been doing jiu-jitsu for 10 years has crappy alignment. Nobody breaks their posture on purpose. It's a real chore to take somebody who's good at jiu-jitsu and take away their posture, their structure, their base. But if you can, then all the moves start to work again. So we're gonna have like, I, I, I don't know, we want concept over moves as far as I'm concerned, but we always need to work back to the actual moves and the actual movements because that's what allows us to express the concepts. So once you understand alignment, that you need to have your alignment, you need to break your opponent's alignment, the other thing we need to recognize is the idea of frames and levers. So frame is simply what I'm using to like support weight, right? My arm right now is acting as a frame. If uh, I'm sorry, I just lean into my legs, you know, these are frames. I can could, I could hold like probably a thousand pounds like this with my shin bones up like this. All right, so that's uh, that's a frame. A lever is a force multiplier. So let me just sit there, but there we go. I want to be a So lean forward, I'm going to try to push you. This is direct application. Like we're, we're equal right now. I'm applying direct application of force. And now stick your leg out for me and lean forward. And this is the lever based application of force. So I'm using the lever to multiply the amount of force that I'm transmitting into my opponent, right? So essentially, Jiu Jitsu is a game or an art or science, like whatever term kind of works for you. I prefer science, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's call it a game. Jiu Jitsu is a game of frames and levers. I want to utilize frames and I want to utilize levers against my opponent. So I never want my opponent to have access to a lever. Simple example that I use is when I perform a technical stand, I'll have you stand up here. If I perform a technical stand up and I go like this, I'm creating a lever access because my leg is light, it's not supporting weight. So if Andrew goes to grab my leg, oh damn, that technical stand is not going to work so well. But if I bring my hip forward and he grabs my leg, now there's no lever access, so I can stand up kind of at my leg. So we're basically playing a game of frames and levers. I want to deny my partner access to them, and I want to change levers into frames and frames into levers. So a lot of what we're going to be doing today with passing is the idea of recognizing when our partner is making proper frames, and how can we change those frames into levers. Everybody follow me? All right. Kids, that all made sense? All right, cool. 